Hey, hey, ho, ho! That song was really crap, I know. It was supposed to be crap, but it was so crap, I wanted to push my fingers right into my eyes. That kind of crap. Hey, hey, ho, ho! That was the worst episode of Raw I've seen for some time. Outside of a couple of matches, everything was either painful or just plain stupid. Hey, hey, ho, ho! Ah, forgotten. I'm Ross Twiddell from Cultaholic Wrestling and these are all the WTF moments from a bloody awful episode of Monday Night Raw. Intro man, hit the intro will ya? Now I just love the fact that Daddy Drew McIntyre's everyday attire when he's going down to the shops, when he's taking the car to the car wash, when he's travelling to a professional wrestling event at the Thunder Durham is a Scottish football shirt and a Scottish kilty kilt. Because of course, that's what all of the people from the Scotland do. All while drinking a can of iron brew, all while munching on some haggis, all while tossing a kibber or two, and all while berating some monkey swans. If you know, you know. And then after having a go at both Shelton and Cedric for losing that handicap match on last week's Raw, despite the fact he is the almighty Bobby Lashley and this whole, oh, I'm not scared of Daddy Drew McIntyre, even though clearly deep down I might just be scared of Daddy Drew McIntyre, despite the fact I'm the almighty Bobby Lashley. It makes no sense, man, WWE. Yes, we fought our way through that kind of logic and then the bloody hurt business imploded. It's all over! I mean, last week it was over in the sense that it was a fantastic professional wrestling stable. But now as I'm stood here on Tuesday day, it's over, it's come to an end, it's all over. It's the wrong kind of over today. The right kind of over last week. And of course, this has got to be a mahoosive WTF moment. A WTF moment that will only become bigger as we see what happened at the end of last night's Raw, but a big WTF moment without that bollocks because we all know the Hurt Business, they looked the part, they sounded the part, and most annoyingly of all, it felt like they had so much more to do on Monday Night Raw, but WWE, they've pissed it all away a couple of weeks before WrestleMania. What's all that about? And then we heard a question asked on Monday Night Raw, the question that's written down right here in front of me. Why do you think Sheamus attacked him, <laughs> Riddle, with your scooter? And I was thinking even he must know that he's really annoying and really brain dead and really annoying. And I was thinking, you know what? Seamus is now a relatable baby face in my opinion after beating the piss out of <laughs> Riddle on last week's Raw. To be honest with you, if I was as big and as muscular as Seamus and I could do that kind of thing, you know, beating up other human beings, I would have done the same. Riddle is annoying. Dun, 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 dun. Foreshadowing. That's what the future probably holds for Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander now that the Hurt Business is no longer a thing. And Kevin Dunn, you doing that on last night's Raw just proves you are a really cruel beaver. You bastard. And then, as if Monday Night Raw could not get any more stupider. Yes, I've said the word stupider. Mmm, riddle. He kicked off his flip-flops and birds flew out of his feet. I'm not even lying, it's a thing that happened. And somehow, someway, the weed which <laughs> Riddle is always high on, even though it doesn't exist in the WWE world, because you know, kids and that don't do, do, don't do, don't do drugs, kids. You'll end up like me. Somehow, someway, though, the weed that <laughs> Riddle does but does not smoke because weed does not exist in that world, it's wormed its way through our screens and into our heads, and we're seeing birds appear from Riddle's naked feet. What is going on? And then while taking the P.I. double S out of Braun Strowman for not being too clever, in Shane McMahon's opinion of course, Colonel McSweaty Bollocks proved he cannot read. As you can see up there, which isn't a real wall for me, it's just a green screen, so I've got to read it from down here. It says summer school may be necessary. But in the words of Colonel McSweaty Bollocks, who was reading that thing there that you can see right now, he said summer school is a necessity. You massive b b b b bell and Shane. And then it got even worse because I swear I heard Colonel McSweaty Bollocks himself say that that report card up there is unrefutable evidence that Braun Strowman is stupid. Un 
refutable. It's not even a word, Shane. It's not even a word. Irrefutable is what we're looking for here, buddy lad. You are irrefutably not the best professional wrestler in the world, but also, quite clearly, the biggest bloody idiot. What the hell is this feud? If you're going to do this feud, which is enough to begin with, at its very concept, at least have the person taking the P-I-S-S out of the person for not being stupid be a bit cleverer than the person who's supposedly stupid. It can't be that hard, can it? This is painful. What an awful episode of Monday Night Raw. Now that I was watching last night's Raw, Braun Strowman versus Jackson Riker, and Jackson Riker, he's on the middle rope. What's he going to do? A tope? Con hello, Canadian destroyer thing? No, he did. Ooh, and then, ooh, and then, eh. That's a thing that happened on Raw last night. And I was just thinking, how the hell is Jackson Riker, you know, appearing on Monday Night Raw? But WWE couldn't find something for Andrade to do. It just makes no sense, does it? Andrade could do that. I mean, I can do it. So if I can do it, anybody can do it. Heh. Heh. Eh. Devastating offence there from Jackson Riker. Now, I can't have been the only person watching last night's Raw hearing something I did not expect to hear with my ears anymore, ever again. You know when Braun Strowman, he goes for a run, and this happens. What evidence did WWC to think that was a good idea to keep around for a second week in a row? I looked high, I looked low, I looked left, I looked right, I even looked in diagonals. And every single bit of feedback I saw about Choo Choo and Braun Strowman, <laughs> it was awful. Nobody was laughing with it, everybody was laughing at it, and how bloody naff it is. And then I've got to make Braun Strowman's choice of a cage match against Colonel McSweaty Bollocks at WrestleMania 37, a luscious, a big WTF moment. You think that's going to stop the hired goons Elias and Riker stopping Colonel McSweaty Bollocks from hitting the floor while trying to pull you off? And trying to get you out the cage? <laughs> and then we've got to think about the person, in fact the mythical professional wrestling god you are facing inside of that there steel cage. Shane McMahon is a specialist in cage matches and we all know this because different rules apply when Shane McMahon is inside of a steel cage. Normal superstars go for a road break, they don't get one, that's what the steel cage match rules are. But Shane McMahon goes for a road break in a steel cage match and he gets the rope break. That's how much of a special man, Shane McMahon is. And then you've got to think about the fat Braun Strowman, the Colonel McSweaty bollocks himself can simply sweat his way to victory when in a steel cage match. That's how much he takes the piss. That's how easy he finds steel cage matches. Challenging Shane McMahon to a steel cage match is like challenging the Fiend to a Firefly Funhouse match. There's no way you're going to win Braun. He will win. And I was thinking surely Braun Strowman was going to say, Shane McMahon, I challenge you to a hell in a cell, mate. That keeps everybody out apart from Kane, doesn't it? And then we have Randall, Randall, Keith, Randall, Keith, Randall, Randall, Keith, saying that both himself and The Fiend are both things cut from the same cloth. So, of course, on one hand, we have Randall Keith, who is a man called Randy. His middle name is Keith, remember? Then we have The Fiend, this supernatural, unkillable, unmurdered, charcoal, fleshy, amazing, magical, spooky clown murderer. Yes, they are both the same thing, Randy. You keep telling yourself that. Good luck. A pro wrestler with messages on a sign I have never seen the like before. And no Xavier Woods gimmick infringement. Kane is not accepting the fact that you up there, body lad, you have a flip chart. He's coming after you for first of all infringing on the gimmick of Sammy Guevara and second of all, and most importantly of all, I guess, Lodi. How are you doing, Lodi? Anyone remember Lodi? Just me. I like Lodi. Do I like Lodi? He was there. He was in the flock. I saw Goldberg squash him once. It was fantastic. And then we have the moment where ring announcer Mike Rome announced that Bobby Lashley versus Shelton Benjamin was a two-on-one handicap match. And I was thinking, two of what, Mike Rome? What does Shelton Benjamin have two of that Bobby Lashley has one of? I'll let you think about that in the comments down below. And then we have the Raw Tag Team Champions hosting a games night to prove which team was the better team, which seems completely unnecessary and completely rubbish as an idea when the Raw Tag Team Champions, they have the Raw Tag Team Championships, which they could just defend, of course, to prove which team is the best. I mean, I'm sorry. Everyone knows I'm a massive fan of the New Day on this channel. I like AJ Styles. Omos, I've got no idea what to think at this stage. 
stage. But I was watching that games night thinking, hey, just do some wrestling or better still WWE, tell a better story. I was watching the games and I just want to take me two fingers and push them up me booty. And then how the hell didn't Omos get that? And it's happening again, everybody. Omos hasn't even had his in-ring debut yet, yet WWE are trying to kill the guy off before he's even started. The pink jumper, haha, -ha, he's seven foot three, but he's wearing a pink jumper. That's something the boomers will find funny. And then he can't even guess that that picture there was the sun. I've got no idea what to think. Think, was there a chance that Omos was saying, hey, New Day, I'm not going to play your game because I'm going to beat you up? That's not the way it came across to me, Bonnie lad. You look at Retribution, the concept of this group trying to take down WWE from kind of within. It's good on paper until WWE did everything in their power to make that make no sense and make that as goofy as possible. And now you've got this seven foot three Goliath called Omos, and they're trying everything to kill that guy off before he's even started. Why do they do this? And I tell you what, that young man right there, he can do a better Hulk Hogan than Hulk Hogan himself. And it's clear to me, everybody, that WWE need to get rid of the real Hulk Hogan from WrestleMania 37 and just have that lad do his impersonation. He's better than Terry. Send him to WrestleMania. Paint me like one of your fried gals. Mere seconds after Alexa Bliss promised the Fiend will murder as they they like to say on Taggart, Randy Orton at WrestleMania 37. The camera sort of pans out a bit or moves out, zooms out a bit. I don't know what the technical terminology is, okay? Don't hate me, film studies people. And then we see Sassy Diva the Fiend just sitting there looking all seductive and burnt and whatnot. What's he like, eh? <laughs> and then finally we got confirmation as to what the M stands for in <laughs> Riddle. It can't ever have been a first name like, you know, Matt or maybe even Mike. It can't have been Matt Riddle infringing on the gimmick of hmm, Danone. It clearly just stands for hmm. What are me lines? I've forgotten them. Yeet. And I'm sure you've seen this moment by now on the Twitter machine or the Reddit machine or any other place like that so you can make your own mind up. But for my money, that is the funniest thing, hmm, what are my lines Riddle has done ever since he became a very stupid man on Monday Night Raw. Botch or intentional, it just fitted his character in my opinion. And the way he scooted off, it just worked. It just completely worked if he is actually a massive idiot, which he clearly is. And I tell you what as well, judging by her reaction, Asuka was not ready for hmm, what are me lines riddle? And then we have Rhea Ripley saying to Asuka, hey Asuka, on my first night here on Monday Night Raw, I was confident enough to challenge you to a title match at WrestleMania 37. Nobody mentioned that. Why, 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 why? We've just been through this bollocks on Friday Night Smackdown with the women's tag team titles and Reggie, who I hate the sight of every single time he appears now on WWE TV. He's a fantastic performer. He showed it in that match against Sasha Banks. He showed it when doing impressive things around the ringside area. But stop involving him in every single thing that happens in all of the women's divisions WWE. It's not helping his cause one bit. But we've been through the women's tag team titles and the Smackdown women's titles becoming one thing on Friday Night Smackdown. And then they thought, hey that was compelling television. That didn't muddy the waters. Too much that it was just naff and impossible to follow along. It was just crap. So we're here again making the women's tag titles and the Raw title become one thing on Raw. It's just beggar's belief, doesn't it? How many times do we have to go through, oh, could these tag team partners coincide? Let's find out next week. Why are Rhea Ripley and Asuka tagging mere days before WrestleMania 37? Here's a novel idea, WWE. Have one storyline for the women's tag titles and a different storyline for the Raw women's title. Two storylines. Is that impossible? Please don't say that's impossible. It shouldn't be impossible. And then a wild, big, baldy bastard Baron Corbin appeared. Sir David Attenborough there. And after a brief moment of, oh, they've got history in three-man bland. The sudden realization, it came over my body. WWE are actually petrified that Daddy Drew McIntyre will get booed by the live crowd inside Raymond James Stadium for WrestleMania 37, that they've got rid of the coolest and the bestest thing just about on Monday Night Raw in the Hurt Business and aligned Bobby Lashley with Big Baldy Bastard Baron Corbin because nobody likes Big Baldy Bastard Baron Corbin. So despite the fact he's a SmackDown superstar, he's now on Raw, he's with Bobby Lashley just to make sure nobody cheers 
Bobby Lashley. They got rid of the herb business before the herb business really did some good and proper things. I know they did do some good and proper things, like winning titles and whatnot, but it just felt like there was so much more. They got rid of this fantastic thing they created and they replaced it with two thirds of three man bland. It's unbelievable, isn't it? I tell you what, I can't wait for Survivor Series, which of course is the one time of the year the superstars of Raw and SmackDown go head to head. <sighs> but hey, at least there's history between those three there. So let's, let's try and tell a compelling story in the, in the week and a bit before WrestleMania 37. Fastling can go to hell still, I tell you. But I think that's it for the WTF moments from this week's Monday Night Raw. I tell you what, if you haven't seen the full episode in full, don't bother. It was awful. Just watch the bits on YouTube. <laughs> I don't know what to say to you. There was a couple of things to like. Sheamus was impressive once again. But outside of that, it was absolutely painful viewing. But Ali was good as well in the main event, as was Ricochet, to be fair. He flew very high. And just before I go today, I've got some unfortunate news to tell you. And that's the news that the Raw WTF Moments videos, the SmackDown WTF Moments videos, and the AEW Dynamite WTF Moments videos, they will be coming to an end uh, with the SmackDown after WrestleMania 37 video. It's not a decision... We as a company wanted to make, it's not a decision I want to make, I'm not sick of making the videos, I still love making the videos, and I still love the fact that after five years, some people still watch them, but the, the horrible sort of brutal fact of the matter is, the viewership has declined to the point where we've been making a massive loss on all of the weekly WTF Moments videos for some time, and quite frankly as a company, we cannot continue to make such a loss multiple times per week. So just to try and let you understand what the sort of process is, it takes me at least half a day to watch and put the script together and film the videos for SmackDown and AEW, a little bit longer obviously for Monday Night Raw, and then takes Richard, who edit the, edits these videos together wonderfully, and has done so for the longest time, you must be sick of the sight and the sound of all of this, he's made a strong stuff that fella, and then takes him a good couple of hours, a few, a few hours at least, to sort of put the video together, put the green screen on, all the, all the cuts and whatnot, because let me tell you, it doesn't take one take every single time I step in here, it's an absolute mess, and just the sort of period of time it takes to put the video together against what we see back in terms of financials, it just means the series, in terms of the weekly stuff, is not financially viable to continue any longer. Um, but crucially, I should say crucially, pay-per-view WTF so will be continuing. WWE and AEW pay-per-views, the WTF moments videos for them, they will be continuing. So first of all, since you're watching this video, thank you so much for sticking by me for this long, to be honest with you. I mean, I was told at the start people would be bored of me after two weeks. It's been five years. Thank you very much. But I guess also to those, to obviously you people watching this video who have stuck by the weekly stuff, I'm very sorry because it's, it's clear that I've done something to sort of drive away the viewership after all this time and just sort of make these videos not doable anymore. It just doesn't make, it's a horrible crap reality, but it's just, it doesn't make financial sense for us to be making such a loss multiple times per week. So there's the news. I think I'm gonna take a bit of a, a hiatus from, from social media because no doubt I'll be getting it in the neck from people who see taking away stuff as in boo, the bad company taking it away from us because they want to, boo. It's not because we want to. I would love to continue doing this. I still enjoy doing them multiple times per week. It's just the financials and everything going on. It's just like we need to make a decision and I could be doing things that make more money for the channel. It's as simple as that. Um, it's, it's, as I say, it's horrible. And hopefully you understand it's not a decision we want to make. It's a decision we've had to make and it's, we've held on for as long as we can. Um, but uh, we can't hold on any longer, so thank you, and, and sorry, I guess. Please be understanding. I'll see you next time.